when you look at an event like today and you get to interact with people that um, because of CrossFit and because of him competing and and putting his his kind of life towards that, you can see the impact that it makes. And that makes it worth it. This is episode number 41 with CrossFit Games champion Graham Holmberg and his wife, Savannah. Welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm Julie Fouché, medical student and former CrossFit Games athlete. Here, I bring to you information and inspiration from experts and everyday individuals for how to use lifestyle to maximize health. Thank you so much for joining me. Now let's get started with this week's episode. Welcome back to Pursuing Health. I'm very excited to bring you a conversation I had with CrossFit Games athlete Graham Holmberg, as well as his wife, Savannah. I first met Graham and Savannah in 2010 at the Central East Regional Competition in Logan, Ohio. That was the year before I went on to compete in my very first CrossFit Games, and Graham went on to win the title of Fittest Man on Earth. Since that time, a lot has happened, and Graham and Savannah now run a successful affiliate in Hilliard, Ohio, just outside of Columbus, called 11th Element CrossFit. Graham, who has a background in playing football and baseball at Capital University, has also continued to train and compete at the highest level of the CrossFit Games with six total appearances. Together, they're raising two beautiful children, and they have one more on the way, and Savannah runs a holistic nutrition coaching business as well. We all caught up after participating in a fundraiser they hosted at their affiliate for the International Justice Mission to talk about how their lives have evolved, their mission, and how they work together to balance their many roles. Before we get started, I have a few quick reminders. First, if you're enjoying the podcast, please head over to iTunes to subscribe and consider giving it a five-star rating. You can also head to my website, juliefouché.com, and enter your email to stay in the loop with the podcast and everything else I'm doing with my bi-weekly newsletter. I'm also always looking for inspiring stories to share. So if you or someone you know has used lifestyle to overcome a serious health challenge, please send your story to me at info at juliefouché.com and I'll select some to share here on future episodes. If you're interested in training with me, check out my program through Beyond the Whiteboard. This is the actual training I do now, five days per week, one hour per day, scheduled out for you minute by minute from warm up to cool down. We also have a train on the go program that's perfect for helping you get your workouts in on vacation or during a busy week at home. For more info or to try the programs out yourself, visit beyondthewhiteboard.com slash Julie Fouché. Also, please remember that although I'm nearing graduation from medical school, this podcast is meant to share the experiences of individuals and it does not provide any medical advice. So with that, let's get started here with episode 41 of Pursuing Health featuring Graham and Savannah Holmberg. Welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm super excited to be here with the Holmbergs, Graham and Savannah, and we are here in your gym, CrossFit Hilliard, 11th Element. Yeah, whatever way works. Whatever fine. way. Yeah. Um, and I'm super excited. We just did a fundraiser that was super fun for International Justice Mission, and this is my, the first time at my gym. I had a great time, so thanks for having us. It's good. Absolutely. It's fun watching you guys. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's definitely fun, and... Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's always fun when you have uh, really high-level athletes going, mm-hmm. and then people just, it's just always cool. It's always humbling when people just are so stoked to watch us go, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, at the end of the day, we're like, man, we're just human, too, and just, we happen to find that we, we're good at exercising yeah. fast. It's but, fun. Yeah, we're all, I mean, we're all suffering just as much on those that's right. burpee box jumps and everything yeah. else. So, um, so I was thinking, as I was going to get to sit down with you guys about when I first met you, which I think was in 2010 at the regionals, which were here in, near Columbus, but they were outdoors. Yeah, it was Logan. Logan, oh, yeah. Logan, Ohio. Um, and I was just thinking back to that. I think, were you engaged maybe at that point or yes. I don't think you were married yet. No, I don't think we were engaged yet. Or maybe oh. you weren't even engaged. That'd be I don't going know. going into the 2010 games. I know that we were engaged when you won. Okay. So, so we might have been engaged, but not married yeah. yet. Um, but yeah, but thinking about that, and then, I mean, that was my first experience with CrossFit competition too. And then, of course, you went on to win that year. And now you have your gym, you have two, almost three kids. Like so much has happened in that time frame, yeah. And it's just cool to see how much you guys have done and how much you've created here in your community. But maybe, 
could you get just kind of like drop us into your lives and give us like <laughs> I don't know if you have an average day but like what is your day-to-day life like right now um yeah it is crazy to think that 2010 was uh I mean shoot with that the six years ago now thinking about it, it it really seems you know so vivid it seemed like it was yesterday and mm-hmm. it's how fast things have went she actually was competing in that regional that year <laughs> yeah I remember which is crazy we were, yeah, to think right that's you know? where I first met you I always tell him like she was I think he took 14th in that regional that year and I DNF like three workouts yeah I mean <laughs> they had muscle ups and the girls were you know at that time there was like three girls at a regional could do muscle ups so yeah just cool to see how far it's came um but yeah I don't know what uh well I think that's a great question two perspectives yeah <laughs> there's two, two perspectives <laughs> sure <laughs> Um, it'd be funny if we give each other's perspective. <laughs> what, like I try to explain what yours yeah, day is? that would be fun. <laughs> All right, so Savannah, she pretty much gets to sleep in every day. <laughs> oh, yeah, <right. laughs> that is true. And while she's sleeping in, I'm catering to the two kids. <laughs> <laughs> I like it's it so pretty far. funny because um, it's kind of a, it's like a, we try to balance it in the morning. So uh-huh. um, for a while, Storm, our oldest son at three, he, uh, he'd sleep in really good. Mm-hmm. I felt, I was like, man, we are spoiled. Like he <laughs> sleeps in and, um, and it just seemed really easy for us. So we didn't really have to feel like we'd rush in the mornings. We mm-hmm. could just get up whenever he kind of got up. Um, and then Hadley came into the picture and I'm then a it's, sleeper. yeah, she doesn't like to sleep. <laughs> oh man. I said, she's just as a morning person. <laughs> she loves to be up early. So there's kind of about like some mornings they they do better, but for the most part, I don't know. It's usually starting around 6.30 to 7. They'll st- both start waking up. And some mornings I'll get up with them both and mm-hmm. just go hang out with them in the morning, just entertain them. Um, you know, usually feed them some snacks. They love, you know, little pieces of uh, some organic Pop-Tarts that you bring home. <laughs> They're good. I actually like them. You eat them um, more than they do. <laughs> yeah. And and usually if, if I'm up, then she'll, you know, just mm-hmm. get some extra sleep a little bit or, you know, vice versa. Mm-hmm. So, but most of the morning really probably kicks up around 8. And we'll kind of yeah. get breakfast going, mm-hmm. which is just a quest because you got kids hanging on your legs and they're <laughs> like, we want to eat and we want snacks. And with trick or treat just happening, <laughs> they're like, we want candy, you know, <laughs> Storm's like, I want candy and whatever you give him, you got to give her because she'll right. have a, a tantrum if you don't hook her up with <laughs> it too. So that's kind of all morning. And then uh, usually head into the gym around 10 and I got a class that I train and teach mm-hmm. at 1030 and it's kind of a specialty class. So it's a little bit separate from the normal everyday mm-hmm. workout. So Mondays and Fridays we do endurance. Tuesday, Thursdays is weightlifting. Wednesdays is gymnastics. Oh, nice! So that's like ten thirty to noon. As and um, like I said, I teach and train with them. Okay. It's not a big group. It's probably five or six people. Mhm. And then we have a noon class, and then usually after the noon class ends, um, I'll usually do the noon class with a couple other guys around one o'clock. We usually get out of the gym around two or so, head home. Um, uh, grab some lunch, shower, change up, and then I come back into the gym for the evenings. Mm-hmm. And I teach another class at 4:30, and I uh, usually teach another class at 5:45, depending on if there's intro people mm-hmm. coming in or not. Um, usually get another workout with a couple of the guys I train with, and then I'm usually heading back home around seven, really, really around seven, 7:30, sometimes eight if it's just a late night. Try to help out with the kids at night, get them to bed, get some dinner in, get a workout in ready for the next day. And, uh, yep, hit the reset button, do it again. <laughs> yeah, but usually that's people... That's my perspective of a day. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they, when they're like, yeah, I ate dinner like 5, 3, 6. I'm like, I wish. <laughs> it's just not the life of a CrossFit yeah. owner. Because yeah. you're usually working that's at That's when that you're time. at the gym, right? So one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, it's definitely switched a little bit, I think, with CrossFit and just owning an affiliate. You have to... It's it's a constant change. You have mm-hmm. to find what works and what flows. And, and so it's, you know, dropping into our life. I mean, it's just so different. But... Um, it was really nice. I mean, Storm was basically raised in the gym until he was three. Mm-hmm. Um, and so his dad was the other day, he's like, you got to get that kid back in the gym. He's, this is prime. He's got to learn to start lifting again. <laughs> and so he's not in there as much. But uh, He has a, some cute videos, too, of him yeah. lifting at home. <laughs> yeah, he's a celebrity. I think my following on social media has doubled <laughs> since I basically started because putting. Of him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I literally, I put a video out of my stuff, lifting or a picture or something, yeah. that, you know, I try to, you know, put out something inspiring or cool and it's, you know, a couple hundred likes, maybe, you know, over <laughs> a thousand likes. I'm like, sweet. I put a something out on Storm or Hadley and it's like 
3,000 likes. <laughs> totally. It's been reshared. It's just yeah. like 500 comments. I'm like, gosh, I guess it's just, just give him his kids, own channel. Kids are cooler than you. But hey. <laughs> already, yeah. it's already happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So through this whole time, too, you've been still training and competing at the highest level. Like, and I know you're still training for this year, correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so can you guys talk a little bit about that and like that decision and that balance as you've been opening up your gym and then having a family and how you decide like how much t do I dedicate to training and um, how you keep that balance? Yeah. I mean, I, even though it's a question really that I can answer, I think maybe do you want to try yeah, to answer it. I'll try and answer it. No, okay. I mean, I just it's, think, you know, that, we talk about it. Right. So. Yeah. It's, um, it has been a journey for sure. Mm -hmm. and I feel, I feel like it's such a great way to, to build a marriage really in the sense of supporting. Um, but then it's also frustrating because in a sense, you know, you're, he's like, you know, we're doing this for the family. I'm like, but it seems all about you at some times. And so you have to really learn how to sacrifice and, mm -hmm. and really support him a hundred percent because he's doing it for the family. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it's it's definitely tough it's definitely tough adding adding on and and actually at the last games that he went to i was actually due on the day of wow. the last day of the games and so oh right because you weren't able to go out that yeah. was uh, 2015 yeah. yeah and so i think a lot of it comes into is just trusting in the lord that he will the path that we choose to take and with his blessing that it will all work out for his good and mm -hmm. it really has mm -hmm. um and so i think just kind of looking at it in the sense of while he's able to, he's like, you know, I'm only going to be able to do this so much longer. And I'm like, you know, you're right. This is probably the toughest years. If you talk to anyone that raises kids, the tough, tough years are when they're little. Right. And so hopefully it's not all a blur, but <laughs> we're just trying to, it's just a day by day. Right. It's not always good. It's not always bad. And, um, we just kind of, when you look at an event like today and you get to interact with people that, mm -hmm. um, because of CrossFit and because of him competing and, mm -hmm. and putting his, his kind of life towards that you can see the impact that it makes and that makes it worth it yeah but when absolutely. he comes home at 8 30 at night and <laughs> i've got screaming children i'm like it's not worth it <laughs> yeah. right stop stop competing <laughs> yeah it's tough i mean and i want to be there for my kids and right. i love i mean my my parents were very present in our our growing mm -hmm. up in um uh, my mom <clears throat> she taught gymnastics at the ymca so all my sisters did gymnastics mm -hmm. i was around that and i remember basically being as, you know, as young as i could I was around a gym mm -hmm. and around my sisters and their sports. Mm -hmm. My dad coached our athletic teams growing up. So we just were very athletic, very on the go. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad worked a night shift job. So, you know, he wanted to be present with us and be able to spend as much time with the kids as he, as we, as he could. And so it's like, you know, I want to reciprocate that to them. I want to be around for mm -hmm. them. And I, it's just they're only going to be so little for so long. Right. And they're just such a cool time to see them. Um at, you know at one and at two and at three years old and it's like you, you miss when you see like pictures and videos mm -hmm. of when you're like oh I miss when they were that stage and <laughs> each new stage is awesome right but it's just like I just I don't want any stage to ever be like oh I wasn't there or, mm -hmm. or I was focused on you know being just me and I try to you know I mean I have a little garage gym at home I don't train in a lot yeah. I mean my intensity here is way better and to me that's always been right been the key is having good intensity I don't care if I'm doing 10 workouts in a day or one I just, it needs to be really good quality, mm -hmm. good intensity. Um, and so for me, that's just kind of been, I think I probably, overall, I probably train less than I used to, mm -hmm. but I think the the quality of each workout, the time that I do get to dedicate to training mm -hmm. is better. Um, Cause there just, there needs to be a balance. And even for my own sanity, I've been doing it for almost 10 years and it's just right. like, I just, uh, some of the young guys I work out with, you know, they're just hungry. They just want to keep going. And I'm like, Hey, to be honest with you guys, um, you need to keep pushing each other. Yeah. I was like, I got to go pick up my kid though. <laughs> right. I got to go help fun. out my wife and help, you know, put the kids to bed. Right. And, uh, you know, I've, and I've been here all day and taught a couple mm -hmm. classes and they're just training. They're just hungry to train. And I remember those kind of days for mm -hmm. myself, but, um, it's scary. It's cool to see that I've been able to stay relevant in it. Mm -hmm. and still be competitive at the high level but it's the sport is definitely catapulting to a new level oh, yeah. quickly and um, everybody's so much stronger than it. it's just scary how strong everybody is how fit everybody is and being strong um, it's really crazy and I think there was only like one person at the games this year I think Josh Bridges is the only one who has kids that was at the games I thought somebody had, I'd heard mm. that so it's like 
here here you see it and it's it's hard to be a parent right and be a, a top level crossfitter right and have a gym or sure. a job or whatever that yeah. people are trying to balance it's so true i think yeah. you see now you have to really make so many sacrifices in order to be at that level but I like how you said you have sort of you can put it in perspective with this greater purpose of like you're taking advantage of these years of your life you're using the talents that you have and kind of trusting in your path so Mm -hmm. I think that helps for sure yeah Yeah. is there any advice that you would give people maybe not people who are training for competition but who are just working out for fun but still trying to balance family and jobs and everything but maybe they still want like really enjoy being at the gym and they want to be there for three hours every night oh or my something God. <laughs> oh, you see majority it. of our members <laughs> yeah so how what do you what advice do you give to them oh man join a gym that's kid, kid friendly <laughs> that's um, good um yeah i mean i think uh again I, when i say intensity too there's got to be some excitement and fun mm-hmm. in what you're doing so if if you're finding that you're getting stressed and pulled too much from one area, mm-hmm. you know, if you're if you're stressed because you're feeling like you're not getting enough time to work out or getting a chance to relieve some stress by working out, mm-hmm. um, communication is probably the biggest key and just communicating with her mm-hmm. and saying like, look, I, I know it's tough right now, but I'm like, I need to get some serious training in right mm-hmm. now. I need to put some focus on like, what can we do with our schedule? How can I help out mm-hmm. here? Where can we find a balance so I can get some good training in these next couple weeks leading into the open or leading into regionals. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it's just, it's really just communication and a team of people around you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a lot of great coaches here. Um, Just a lot of people that just help out with just cleaning the facility and helping out with trash, just like Mm -hmm. little things that just consume another five to 10 minutes of your day here and there that, um, you know, could be used again, either put towards training or again, helping, helping members out. Um, or helping out, you know, the wife and the mm-hmm. kids at home. And, um, but yeah, I think keeping your excitement, keeping your passion for what you're doing, um, is key and, tr- you know, avoiding getting burned out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, kind of the key. that's been a common, well, how long have we been working out together now? Well, uh, so well our first date <laughs> was a workout. Date was, of course. Well, she's like, you're a personal trainer. I got to see how, you know, good of a workout that you can put people through. That's and the test. and she's like, I, I do like Billy Blanks, Billy ba- was it Blanks or Banks? Yes. Ty Bo. I loved him. And I do, you know, yoga and I do all these workouts. She's yeah. like, I can, I can do a workout. <laughs> Show me what you got. She was. It was terrible. Yeah. It was a pretty tough workout. But it was, and how many arguments we've gotten into and it's so tough because you are like you you are the gym, so you can't. Many times, Graham's like, "You can't talk to me like that." I'm like, "I can. You're my husband. I can talk to you however I want." <laughs> and you're being mean, right? Because I'm not looking to win the CrossFit Games, right? And so I think that's a great is when people walk in the doors, and some people want to come in here to compete, and some people want to come in here just to be healthy, mm-hmm. and some people just don't want to die. And so I'm just one of those that just wants to be healthy, mm-hmm. and he always tries to push me and in his coach set you know coach setting and I'm like just say you're doing a wonderful job <laughs> well, I don't need nice. to say go heavier <laughs> that's all you're lifting and so he's he's tries but I'm still working on that you make cheerleader work. not so much a you know Co- a, coach. yeah coach yeah. Just you know who to keep coach support. Support. <laughs> yeah it's, I agree with that 100 <laughs> percent. but it's tough because she's really good she's really athletic really oh, thank you really uh mechanically moves well on all Mm -hmm. the so it's like when i see her doing stuff really really it looks really easy (laughs) naturally as a coach i'm like come on you can do a little more than that yeah and of course when she's breathing hard and the workout's tough she's like that's not what i want to (laughs) hear i'm like oh gosh here it comes so uh you know too many fights and uh just you know not like bad fights but um just you know wasted time of Right. energy of arguing and being upset with each other when I'm just trying to coach or whatever <laughs> and yeah but it's it's usually we can patch work it up and yeah. move, move on and do better learn the next from time. it yeah that's awesome can you talk more about your community here and I know and actually can you just talk about the name 11th element and what that means and kind of what you try to create here in your community yeah we um what you want me to say? Or you want yeah, to say? I think leading into it, when we when we opened up this gym, we, you know, he had owned an affiliate for ever since we'd been together, and mm-hmm. so there was that time frame where we're like, this is really weird for us. We don't have a gym. We're, we need a gym. We need mm-hmm. some sort of income, and we were really stuck on a name. We went back and forth. We wanted it to be really strong and for his kingdom, and we just didn't have any idea. And then he one night said, 
What about the yeah, 11th element? Yeah, 11th element. And <clears throat> so the, the 10 elements that you train, and I think Dynamax is where the 10 elements mm-hmm. came from originally, yeah. but they, they use it at CrossFit level ones a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, we, I forced all our coaches to memorize it, so I have <laughs> to say it right now. But <laughs> strength, power, speed, stamina, endurance, accuracy, agility, balance, coordination, flexibility. Mm-hmm. Um, and so those are those 10 general elements that we train. And so I was like, well... For uh, for us personally, I mean, we've we've had our ups and downs, just like everybody has. And mm-hmm. and when we look back at a lot of our ups, um, you know, we put God in the f- the forefront of what we were doing, um, just in our marriage, mm-hmm. and our relationships, uh, friendships, our family, and um, and it just seemed like things were doing better when we we kept our our faith strong mm-hmm. and and kept that focused and. So we're like, man, we got to include this somehow with mm-hmm. the gym, but I don't like, I'm nervous because I don't want to feel like I'm offending people. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, now in this day and age, it's like, you got to be so politically correct. You don't want to rub somebody the wrong way. You don't want to say the wrong thing. And so I'm like, well, shoot, we're going to put a cross on our logo and basically say, hey, we're Christians and this is a Christian owned gym mm-hmm. and a Christian owned focus of how we do things. And I'm like, well, is this going to you know, scare members away. And I mm-hmm. just said, well, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's ultimately in his hands and we'll see what happens. So yeah, we named it 11th element, decided to, you know, teach people what the 10 elements mm-hmm. were and, and tell them what the 11th is. And so what we did, um, and what I wanted to do was like, you know, use the space as like a church mm-hmm. potentially on like Sundays. Mm-hmm. And uh, here we are almost three years and we never really did that. But what we would do is Saturdays after our class workout, mm-hmm. um, I'd put together like a short message. She would do it. I've had some members speak. I've mm-hmm. had um, some of our coaches do a little share. And it's usually like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. It's a very, very little sermonette type mm-hmm. of thing um, to share a little bit of our testimony, share a little bit of some word and just some things that have impacted our, our walk and, mm-hmm. and just see if people like it. And, and people really loved it. Um, some people leave before mm-hmm. we, we speak and it's, you know, I'm like, I don't, I'm not offended. It's, right. you know, I'd, I'd ho- encourage people to stay, but I'd, it's, you know, we're not going to force you here. We're not taking a tithing offering. You're, you're paying members. So, right. you know, it's, it's we just, should start doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the offering trace. <laughs> yeah. This, um, and so right now we're actually working with a, a, a couple who had just moved up here from Cincinnati. They said they were looking for churches oh. and they were going to plant a church. And I was mm-hmm. like, cool, where are you guys, what locations you guys have? And they're like, we don't have one. Oh. And so he's came in, he started sharing, doing some messages for us. We're getting to know them a little bit. And we're actually going to do a soft launch with them here at the end of November. Wow. Um, and so we are going to basically open the doors up and be on a church on Sundays. And so that was something that we had visioned and kind of had. And, and now it's kind of come in full circle, but I didn't want to rush it. I don't want to force it. Right. And, um, so hopefully it's it's going to be a, a good success, and they already have a really good good group of people. Um, we've kind of bounced around from some different churches that mm-hmm. we just you know wanted to find fitting for us, but um, just excited for what that that'll be. But the community here is great. I, I think I always say we could do more community type of stuff and come around Columbus and do some stuff. We've we've done um, you know a few other fundraisers. We've definitely done some care packages and went around and helped out some homeless people in mm-hmm. Columbus. And, you know, and the response is always great from our members. They love doing that stuff because um, we just want to be more than just a, a gym that's just providing great workouts mm-hmm. and, and, and a good quality product. I just think there's not that we, um, you know, are forcing our hand to do that. It's mm-hmm. just we have the means, we have the the support, we mm-hmm. have the, the, the power to do it. So why wouldn't we? Right. Yeah. It's just kind of like the whole purpose of Reps for Rescue. Like, exactly. It's like easy we're... to give back. I mean, how much we've been supported to get where we are. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't we go ahead and do the extra extra work to help somebody else out? Right. And like we were talking about today, we're all going to come together for a workout on Saturday, or most of us are going to come together for a workout on Saturday morning, so why don't we do it for a good yeah. cause? And there's so much power in this community that we have. So Absolutely. that's really cool to see. Yeah, it is. That's awesome. And do you think that most of your members are Christian then, or do you think that you welcome, or like, I mean, obviously you welcome everyone, but yeah. do you think other people are attracted to the gym as well I I honestly think that and I'm not here all the time but everyone that walks into our gym mm-hmm. and and I, I always ask them how'd you hear of us how'd you find us mm-hmm. um online mm-hmm. um a lot of people are referred to us but um I would say a lot of people are like we really we really liked the the faith aspect mm-hmm. 
and then some people don't even say anything about it. Right. And so it's not like we come and be like, are you a Christian? Right. And we've actually had a lot of people that have come in and um, I say a handful, not a lot, but a handful of people that have actually gone on to be baptized and given their life to wow. the, the Lord, which is really heartwarming. That's amazing. So, I mean, I know that it's a lot of people that come in and, and are struggling and you don't, you don't know they're struggling mm-hmm. until you look, get to learn a little bit more about them. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a, we have a young lady here that, um, has struggled a, a long time with um, a personal struggle with her, and she actually um, went into mentor to people in prison. Okay. And so that was kind of her kind of thing, and and she's just really just been a, a blessing to us, but in our community, and mm-hmm. Jim has been a really big blessing to her. So. Wow. But yeah, we've cool. definitely had people that are not of the faith. Right. Yeah. Right. And you see, I mean, you hear people talk about that too, about how CrossFit has a lot of the similar, you know, just the way that it brings people together yeah. and the community and the support has a lot of the, you know, the same aspects of a church community that's there to support each other. Yeah. And so it's cool so that you cool. can actually bring them together under one roof yeah. and um, be able to share that with your community. Yeah. Cause it's funny. You said one time he's like, it does have the word cross in it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Fit for the cross. That's true. So cross there is it. Have yes. you ever seen that YouTube video of the, cro- <laughs> the guy a, acting no. like Jesus carrying no, a cross? The, yeah. Carrying a cross. Yeah. I was <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good a little lot. parody. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, oh, yeah, to a I cer- do remember that. I, to a degree. I, I look at it this way. <clears throat> we, we have, we're designed with a sense of humor. So if I'm going to say, you know, that means I have to look at the intelligent designer being God mm-hmm. designed us to have sense of humor. So <laughs> um, it, on one level, okay, it's probably a little right. insulting to, to Jesus Christ and insulting to, to God's message for us. But um, on the other hand, like I said, I think you have to be willing to laugh a little bit mm-hmm. and and, and get the humor in what they're trying to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you can't laugh at yourself and, and, and be serious mm-hmm. and, and have some flexibility in both of those, then you struggle. I'm very sarcastic, it's, <laughs> which gets me in trouble sometimes. Um, but I, I try to, I think people, I think m- most of the time people understand where I'm, I'm coming from a good place and I'm just trying mm-hmm. to create some humor and some, some laughter in some of the situations. But it's just, you know, it's just tricky, they know. you know. People are coaching. People are sent. You know, I mean, I understand it. It's like you just got to be sensitive in some, are, some areas. And, and you got to make sure you know who your people are that you are j- joking with mm-hmm. and being sarcastic with and make sure there's a, a proper rapport built with them before you, you go that avenue. Right. And people are like, what did he just say to me? <laughs> did he just really say that? Did he just add a wall ball run to our yeah. work? I did. I, yeah, I'll drop that on you. No problem. Yeah. But, you um, said it. That it's like a almost, you know, in a in a good way. There's it's a cult type of feel. You know, you you get in and you're hooked. And um, but I mean, it's just for for such good reasons. And mm-hmm. I think that was another reason why we wanted to have that involvement and make it. You know, because you see so many people find that community in a church mm-hmm. and small groups and that kind of stuff, and they just grow so much better. Mm-hmm. And I thought, man, this, you see that same type of commitment and just loyalty to mm-hmm. the, to members with them with each other and i'm like you see a lot of cool similarities that you see in a church that you see in a crossfit gym mm-hmm. i'm like let's just you know let's find a way to blend it and so that's what mm-hmm. we've kind of done we've had a lot of i mean there's some cool other like becky konzelman and chip pew run yeah. faith rx it's you know huge following um and i mean we we've kind of spun another brand off of ours with uh, have faith and hustle mm-hmm. and um and just just that i mean the response that we get from people is is really 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 cool and mm-hmm. and it's inspiring it helps us you know keep some fire lit to keep pushing it um but yeah i mean I, there's just countless stories of people saying they didn't really know where they were where they stood with with faith mm-hmm. or if they really believed in god or what they they thought on that but the impact that they've they've experienced with the gym and the coaching and the community mm-hmm. they're like it's been like life changing for them and that's from even some teenage kids upwards to, you know, people in their fifties and sixties. So, um, all it takes is one person saying that there's an impact made for us to say, all right, let's keep our heads down. Let's keep doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's been good. That's amazing to hear. Wow. And what is the have faith and hustle? What do you guys do with that? Um, right now, I mean, it started off just space of t-shirts like, Hey, let's put that on a, and and really the reason we did it is because 11th element sometimes was tricky to explain to people Mm -hmm. or takes too long. (laughs) <laughs> and so when you say have faith and hustle, you, it's pretty clear. Like, all right, I'm going to have faith in what I'm doing and I'm going to put the work in. Yeah. Um, I've always kind of kidded and say like, you know, it's good to pray to God, but it's also good to put a shovel in your hands and start digging. <laughs> um, and so 
for for outsiders that maybe aren't necessarily just a fan of me or a fan of the gym, but maybe have um, you know passion for involving their faith with their fitness community and, mm-hmm. and how they train, um, Faith and Hustle gives them kind of a platform to be like, I support that. I'm totally in agreement with that. Mm-hmm. And again, I don't have to explain it as much as say an 11th element. So, mm-hmm. um, so that's kind of a little different program. Like right now, I'm just doing some small workshops. I'll go and depending on what they really want, if they want more coaching and instructing, mm-hmm. then I'll keep it that. I'll coach and instruct, you know, talk about the Olympic lifts, talk about just some basic stuff. I'll put people through a few workouts, just a, like about a four hour day. Mm-hmm. And um, I've done uh, Cincinnati, I've done here in Columbus, I've done up in Cleveland. Um, and, and, and then also kind of share a little bit of my story, a mm-hmm. little bit of backing of who I am and where, you know, why I feel like I'm, I'm at where I'm at. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it, I give that back to God and say, mm-hmm. this is, I've, I've put a lot of time and effort in, but I feel like a lot of doors and avenues have been opened by God to get me to where I'm at. Mm-hmm. And so that's a little bit of the workshops that we do. Um, right now I'm working on, it should be probably ready to launch probably into November, like uh, online programming. Oh, nice. Um, and it's really based for affiliates. Okay. Um, I, you know, there's so many people trying to sell individual programming mm-hmm. out there. That I just was like, I don't really want, I'm going to offer that level. And that's basically what I'm doing mm-hmm. type of workouts every day. But I, I know I can, we can continually keep reaching people. And so really, I just want to give them basically the same type of workout we do for our class, mm-hmm. add that faith element into it as well. And, um, and again, just give some, just another way to connect with people. And again, provide not just a faith aspect, mm-hmm. but kind of a hustle. And here's the workout right. grind that goes with I it. I love too. that. That's really cool. Yeah. Because I think that's, you think about like the things that you, or I think about, you know, the things that I need to do every day just to like keep myself feeling well and working out is certainly one of those, obviously like sleeping, eating well, and then <clears throat> some sort of prayer, some sort of like yeah. connecting. And even I think about like the apps on my phone, I have like my little Jesus Calling app and I have my workout tracking app yeah. and I like make sure I check in with each of those every day. So yeah. Yeah. that's a really cool idea. It's important. Um. I want to talk to you about some of the things you do with nutrition. Savannah. Oh, okay. So I know that you do some nutrition coaching and yeah. like health coaching. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And then also, do you help Graham with that? Or is that another like <laughs> he just off limits? And jail <laughs> no, no, I, um, I just, from a young age, I was super passionate about the human body uh-huh. and just, um, was really intrigued by it. And so I would go into math class just thinking like, can I just learn something about nutrition? Yeah. <laughs> and so I, um, I actually opted out of going to like your former college and I mm-hmm. went to um, Institute of Integrative Nutrition, which is like an online okay. um, largest nutrition school in the world and really studied every type of diet. Mm-hmm. And um, it was interesting because I was a vegetarian in that day and okay. I wasn't vegetarian when I met him, but I came home from this yoga conference and I was like, I'm a vegetarian and I'm not cooking you any more meat. And he <laughs> How'd was that like, go over? <laughs> not, not good. One, not good. <laughs> I was like, you will cook meat. <laughs> Listen, woman, put that chicken on the grill yeah. on that now. Yeah, so. I was definitely like, oh, that's fine if you don't want to eat it. But I'm like, you prepare a lot of the meals. So, <laughs> like, now I'm just stuck making all the meat. He's like, I'm not a rabbit. <laughs> I need more than a salad. And so, yeah. um, through that journey of uh, becoming a health coach, um, really passionate about interacting with people. Mm-hmm. And I love to just learn about people and really kind of help them see a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, but also encourage them because some people just need encouragement. Right. Um, but I... I found my health declining a lot and mm-hmm. I had some really serious issues and, and Graham's like, I think you should just really eat meat. And I'm like, I could never eat meat, the poor animals. <laughs> but in that journey, I, I learned the importance of good quality right. meat. And so I started, um, actually learning more about the paleo diet. Okay. Um, and I learned about the paleo diet and actually heard Rob Wolf talk about it. And I was like, that's complete baloney. Like (laughs) everybody needs to be vegetarian. It's a healthy way to save the planet. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think God kind of used that experience to open my eyes that not just one way is good for Mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Um, people can thrive off a vegetarian diet and people can thrive off a paleo diet. And so 
I really started working one-on-one -on -one with people um, with the paleo diet and I just saw such huge success with it mm -hmm. that I was like, you know, I should probably start to do it. And so whatever I'm cooking, obviously he's eating. And so we started taking out rice and spaghetti and all your processed foods and mm -hmm. um, just really saw a huge improvement in ourselves. Um, and so I have been sticking on that route with people. Um, I just do, since I've had children and, and that kind of thing, I, I do it on the phone now. Okay. Um, and so I work with people on their specific goals and I run them through a, a, a lifestyle wellness kind of plan. Awesome. Because it's, you know, if you go on a meal plan, thank you. Sorry, there's flies. Yeah. Oh. No, we don't need those now. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> um, if you put someone on a meal plan and you're like, here we go, here's your meal plan, they don't really learn much, mm -hmm. right? They, they might lose some weight, but after that, it's like they're going to go back to their old habits. So I really work with people on creating new habits in mm -hmm. the form of, you know, seasonal eating. Are you eating the same thing all the time? Right. Um, and more holistic approaches. Um, definitely something I feel like just super passionate about is just holistic approaches, like mm -hmm. giving our body what it really needs to heal. And so Graham, I kind of felt like I've, I've turned him around. He's been my biggest, <laughs> biggest experiment. Um, he, he definitely is is on board with me now before he's like milk is milk and I'm yeah. like no it's not it's <laughs> organic milk and this kind of milk and this is the difference and um to this day you know him and our my father-in-law we our just dad. continue to go back and forth and, yeah. and that kind of thing but Good. yeah I think you know really when he's in training um we're, we're logging it we're seeing like what his macros are mm -hmm. not every day but we're just make sure because we're eating the same thing mostly every day yeah. and um really just making sure that he has the proper fuel and, and a high fat diet is really important for him. Mm -hmm. So um, we find that to, to really be helpful. And for our members too, because when they walk in the door at any cross CrossFit gym and they're putting so much effort in this and they're mm -hmm. not getting the help that they need in that area, they're, they're going to fail at some point and mm -hmm. they're going to feel pretty miserable while they're kind of going through that workout. Right. And so what I've noticed is that people just are misinformed mm -hmm. and just being a light in the form of information has been a real way for me to be a blessing mm -hmm. um, to other people. And um, it's just something that I really love to do. That's awesome. Yeah. I love to see that too. And because I think so many gyms um, maybe focus so much on the workouts and the nutrition kind of gets lost or people end up yeah. doing it on their own or finding their own way. And so it's great to have that, you know, resource right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. It's great. Um, last thing I want to touch on is if you're willing to talk about oh, yeah. some of your experience about working out while through your pregnancy, oh, cause you, you've mm -hmm. been doing CrossFit since your yeah. first, correct? Yeah. Um, and maybe just some of that experience, if they've been different yes. things that have worked for you or not worked for you. I know obviously everyone has a completely different experience every yeah. time. Um, but we also saw a very awesome video of Graham recently <laughs> on your uh. Instagram. So if you, you if you're, that, you have yeah, to watch if you're it. listening, you should definitely check that out. My yeah. <laughs> obnoxious laugh too. I've just accepted it. There's been so many videos that I've, I've recorded of Graham over the years and the people are like, who is that lady laughing or screaming? And I'm like, it's just who I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, go, yeah, but Graham go. with a wall ball strapped to him trying to do all the different movements. Yeah, so. it's been really it different. Awkward. That's tough. It's, it's very awkward and, and his was a little high. We placed it a little high. Usually yeah, it's a, a little lower. Um, but I strapped it. it so tight on him when he stood up. I was like, it's on. But it's been, um, with my first son, it was, um, it was really easy. Not like easy working out, but it was much easier than it, than it ever has been. Mm -hmm. um, but it was really humbling because as an affiliate owner and, and as someone that is generally pretty good in CrossFit and mm -hmm. never have really been the one to kind of suffer through at the end, mm -hmm. you know, I was that person at the mm -hmm. end. And in the beginning, it was really uncomfortable um, and just eye opening because Again, I feel like God takes us through those experiences so we can be passionate towards other people. Mm -hmm. And so that was really eye-opening for me to be like last and, <laughs> and really suffering. Yeah. Um, but I was never scared to like modify anything. But I think the main reason that I wanted to keep um, doing CrossFit is obviously not to, in your first pregnancy, you don't know if you're going to gain a bunch of weight, but you want to be strong for labor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was extremely helpful in that sense. And then with my second pregnancy, um, I... I went into it with a mentality of like, I'm going to be tougher this time because mm -hmm. how many women have been pregnant around us and they literally come in and they're setting PRs on like their <laughs> due date. And I'm like, maybe I should be a little tougher. Like maybe I should not be such of a wimp. Right. Yeah. 
that's scary. And Carefully, so again, yeah. in that process, I learned to, to humble myself. Like I can't be another person. Right. I have to listen truly to listen body. to myself and, and do what's best for myself. Um, and then with this little guy or girl, whatever it is in there, it's um, it hasn't been as much. Okay. I'll come and get like really sore. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I have two kids to go home and take care of. And right. so that is kind of my work out there. But I think if I had to give just one word of, or like one sentence of advice, it would just be day by day, mm. how you feel. Mm-hmm. Women are so different. Absolutely. And, and so one person coming here and do overhead squats and I'm like, that's just not what I'm going to do. Right. <laughs> just yeah. not doing overhead squats. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting too. And I, I get, I get women asking me, they're like, Hey, so I'm pregnant. And I just, I want to, you know, make sure I'm safe and I want to mm-hmm. modify things. And I'm looking at them like, uh, what? well, how far along are you? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, I'm only like eight or nine weeks. I'm mm-hmm. like, you'll be fine for yeah. a while. <laughs> yeah. You might be tired. You might feel sick, but yeah. you're going to be okay for quite some time. You probably aren't going to need to modify much. Um, and I mean, she said it, like we've had some ladies, um, even one of the ladies today who's got four four kids mm-hmm. and then fifth on the way i mean she'll she's crazy in a good way but she's just she'll come in here and just get after it wow. like full-blown like i'm pretty sure you need to go home and lay down because that baby <laughs> has got to be due any day now and wow. uh she just is like nah i'm good i'm good and yeah i mean she said it you got to go day by day you got to know what your body feels like and mm-hmm. you know mentally if you feel like you want to push but um it, you know it's interesting because you get some doctors and you get some you know advice that says mm-hmm. You know, don't lift anything more than like 10 pounds. Don't mm-hmm. get your heart rate to certain things. Don't mm-hmm. do this. Don't. And then we are seeing women in the CrossFit space, you know, really pushing the envelope, lifting mm-hmm. good, mm-hmm. heavy weight, um, having, you know, doing really challenging high heart rate type workouts um, and having extremely healthy pregnancies and births mm-hmm. and extremely healthy kids. So you're like, well, then why are we, why are we holding women, women back in that when there may be a, you know, and obviously this is a very small percent of people and it's very small cases. And, and obviously I think that would be a a mother's worst fear is that, well, I'm going to just focus on staying healthy and fit during my pregnancy Mm -hmm. and then potentially do something damaging to the, to the baby, um, could be very, very scary. But I, I mean, I'm, you know, overly impressed more and more with what women do and, um, not that I've ever been unimpressed, <laughs> but I look at yeah. when I say like, man, I look at what guys have to do in the workouts and mm-hmm. how hard it is for the muscle ups and the rope climbs and how hard it is for us. And I'm like, these girls aren't getting any cut on slack on yeah. reps. Yeah. And I'm like, that's just impressive. It's just <laughs> impressive to see. I mean, we got a lady that's in her fifties doing muscle ups and I'm like, that's legit. That's yeah. so impressive. <laughs> like, amazing. I mean, I hope I can still do a muscle up when I'm 50, but she's, you know, a, a woman has kids and it's just so cool. But She's had, you know, this our second pregnancy. We, like, we're a little Amish, so we had it. <laughs> we had the baby at home. A little Amish. <laughs> we had the baby at home, and okay. then the first our first baby, we thought we were going to do a home birth as well. But she still, we went to the hospital. But I mean, she's had no, you know, no, um, no assistance or no no medicine or anything mm-hmm. like that for the birth. It's been all natural, and uh, it's just inspiring for me to see my wife just push through something like that that's Mm -hmm. that's just amazing to see and I'm like man it's just I I just you know hope to encourage her to to share that with other women too like that it the body is designed to do this Mm -hmm. absolutely um is you know as long as you're prepared well for it and you're you're strong 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 willed and you're you're focused because I I know I'm sure at times for her it's got tough and she's like probably like give me the medicine like I I can't do this (laughs) my midwife's like honey I don't have that (laughs) yeah moment of weakness so my respect for yeah. again not that i ever didn't have respect but it's just like it goes to a whole new lo- notch when i again watch her give birth to our, our children i'm like that is unreal wow. i just can't believe i just witnessed this i think this you had it on the head when like it's that's what god designed us as women to do and if i had it any other way i would have wished that he would have made men carry children but um (laughs) but um it's same thing relates back to being pregnant and crossfit it's functional movement right you know it's and it's what what the body's designed to do and as long as you're not well pregnant people run marathons but as long as you're giving your body back to that nutritional standpoint what it needs to thrive and it's not taking it away from from the baby Mm -hmm. Um, but the baby's pretty good at sucking all the life out of you (laughs) so there's not any problem with that (laughs) Wow. And of course, you know, being prepared even 
prior to obviously you're not going to like start CrossFit and start doing everything all crazy yeah. once you get pregnant but having that foundation and then just building upon it and listening Absolutely. to your body every day that's yeah very cool your body kind of knows <laughs> awesome so I want to end with three questions I ask everyone you guys can answer them together or separate however you want um, the first one is three things you do on a daily basis that you think have the biggest positive impact on your health mm. or a regular basis doesn't have to be daily okay the three things let's come from the three things I think eating breakfast definitely. I always try to instill that in healthy habits mm-hmm. is definitely we, our breakfast is probably one of our most favorite times oh. of the day and the place <laughs> you've, you've been day. in North Star yes. the place we're going to go have brunch still uh, is great so two breakfasts awesome. for me today I'm <laughs> so excited not it's a good day this morning that. she's like you know she's like I'm not making any bacon I'm like oh. <laughs> well okay <laughs> Because we were, you know, it's, it's we got up a little earlier yeah. and hustling in. So I was like, that's all right, we'll that go. That sets the foundation for your day, especially oh, yeah. that Bulletproof coffee. You got to get that in there. Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, maybe this may be an element that I don't want to say people maybe overlook, but sleep's really important. Mm. Um, yeah. And I mean, for us, it's definitely, we definitely enjoy our sleep. And again, having our own business and having our own job. Um, you know, definitely helps. I mean, we run some early AM classes Mm -hmm. and I have taught my fair share of teaching early AM classes. I've talked to some of your members who come at 515. Oh my, that's early. That's early. (laughs) Dedicated. And I'm just very thankful that I have coaches that are, and fortunately they don't, not one coach gets up early every day. I have two coaches that share it. So that's really good. And again, I can always bounce in and help out if, if need it. Um, but that's, that's really important. I mean, if you're not, you know, after a really tough training day, mm-hmm. if I'm not getting good quality sleep, um, it's it's immediately it just snowballs into the next day, and then it snowballs into the next night, and mm-hmm. it's just play you know hard to play catch up with that. And um, but it's crazy. Some people they say like, oh, and even my dad doesn't sleep well, mm-hmm. or really for 30 plus years of his life got very little sleep, but it's pretty healthy. We won't talk about him. he's a freak. Yeah, sure, that's a different. God anomaly. literally God made him very uniquely. <laughs> yeah, sure. So definitely sleep. sleep I think those important. are pretty important for us. Um I don't, I don't want to just go with the the given um given workout, but I would say probably if if I could maybe add the just that we talked about it, just the balance. Yeah. You know, I I just I think to be healthy and just have the energy and just the just the happiness in my mm-hmm. everyday life. I mean, being happy is something that you know we I think we strive to do, and that's being happy is it helps being communicating and being balanced. So it gives us that opportunity. If we can get our workout in and also have our family time, that gives us that that mm-hmm. happiness balance in both of those. Because obviously we work out and we encourage people to work out as our career and our mm-hmm. job. So. I mean, that's an important part for us to, to make sure that we're, mm-hmm. we're healthy and fit and that, yeah. I mean, I just feel better. I mean, I try to take rest days and it's just, um, I just, I feel better when I do something, mm-hmm. when I just don't do anything. I feel better when I take rest days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody's different once again. Sure. <laughs> but that's good. What about one thing that you think would have a big impact on your health, but you have a hard time implementing it or hmm. you just haven't been, been able to stick to it? That's a great question. There's probably so many things. Well, for me, um, I think for me personally, since I do buy all the the food and that kind of thing is just greens. Mm -hmm. I buy kale on the regular and I'm like, because I would like to juice it because it's just so good for you. So abundantly available to your body when you juice it. Um, And we are so deprived of that. Just mm-hmm. our children, just us in general, and and we kind of turn to these, these supplements and in that form, they're so isolated that it's mm-hmm. not the same. And so, just the other day, I was like, oh, another bunch of kale went went bad. Went bad. It's yes. super cheap. Though. It's like ninety three cents. But I, for me, that just came to mind because I was just thinking about yesterday because Storm loves to juice with me, mm-hmm. um, but it's such a pain in my butt. You gotta get it's, the juicer out oh, and yeah. I gotta clean it and usually here spill it everywhere. <laughs> um, but other than that, I mean, we have a, a really good routine on stuff what we do, but there's so many things that you think like, oh, I should do that. We were just talking the other day about actually at the end of the night, we, we like to use this from Marcus Hendren, like TV is like a um, cheap, cheap. Uh, cheat meal for your brain cheat meal for your <laughs> it brain. just feels good sometimes yeah. and I wish that sometimes I could unwind more and um and maybe a nice little book or maybe even God's word at the end of the day but it's just you're so exhausted you mm-hmm. don't want to actually make your brain work you just want to 
like unwind. Right. Become so a vegetable on the couch. Right. I think about that a lot. That's something that comes to mind. Yeah, I mean, we've there's been we had a couple of years where we didn't have television at all, and that was mm. you know I don't really miss I didn't miss it at the time, and then you know we get it. And I'm always like, well, I gotta have it during my football season. I gotta watch my football right. games. Um, <laughs> and then somehow we got stuck on The Bachelor. <laughs> yeah, I got. Seems like a popular trend. <laughs> Let's not get sucked into that again. It's so funny. <laughs> but I did meet him at the CrossFit Games. Okay. I saw. Okay, that was pretty exciting. That's very yeah. cool. <laughs> I think if I could say, if probably there's there's three things for me that I was actually just talking with somebody the other day. I need to do better at hydrating, mm. and a lot of times it's just carrying a, a gallon jug around. Yeah. If like that's my measure stick for each day. If I'm drinking that gallon, I'm on top of it and I'm good Um, because I feel I just feel better my knees everything my whole body just feels better Mm -hmm. sleep better skin I think looks better you just it's I know I've heard her say it before we're just chronically dehydrated Mm -hmm. so if I'm if I'm drinking enough water I feel like it's just it's a big impact Um, and it's just one of those discipline things you just got to drink it and got to have have the discipline to do it but that's kind of one and I think for me and she's always said this and i still to this day I'm guilty of it I don't eat enough mm. and I mean usually mm-hmm. when yeah. competition season comes around I'm usually on it and I'm a lot better getting you know tons of my my calories in and keeping mm-hmm. things you know recovering well but like right now this off season out of out and around competitions I'm not eating enough and mm-hmm. it's not that I don't Protein like eating yeah. it's just I'm yeah. I'm oh. just so busy and it's like to sit down and make a meal or right. ha- you know because now she's even busier so a lot of times I was she would be able to have a lot more flexibility and she's like oh I can just meal prep for him Mm -hmm. and so now it's becoming a little bit more on my shoulders yeah and I'm just like it's just one of those things (laughs) I just don't even do it (laughs) and I'm just she's like what'd you eat today and I'm like you don't even want to know I'm like I haven't (laughs) even eaten anything she's like how have you I get so upset too I'm like why haven't you eaten anything that's the same thing with my husband when he gets busy and stressed he like just doesn't eat yeah Yeah. and I'm like I am the opposite like I just eat everything I I wish I but but then I just have to like remind him like you need to eat yeah Yeah. (laughs) for sure yeah that's a good one and it's it's convenience too yeah cook 15 minutes cooking or two minutes of blending yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and th- yeah. For me, and th- I think the other third thing would probably be just like a. Um, I feel like I've always had the skill sets to to succeed well in CrossFit. The just the movement patterns, the the right body type and mm-hmm. size, and um, just the mental, the, you know, the mental capacity to, to train and do it all. Um, and I got into a really good stretching habit, mm. you know, leading into the regionals this last year. I've kind of got out of it, you know, mm-hmm. it gets, it's another one of right. those, just be disciplined things. And I was, I would be stretching in the morning, stretching at night. And I felt like I was sleeping better mm-hmm. after I had a good stretch routine going, um, working on just hip, hip flexibility and, and shoulder and just, you know, just hamstrings and just my body felt better. And I just, um, I've gotten away from it mm-hmm. and I need, I know she's like, when have you haven't been doing <laughs> your sit Indians, like cross like, Oh no. <laughs> so and I know it's, it's fed into like, you know, and I'll have some, you know, issues with the knees feeling just Mm -hmm. tight or tendons don't feel good or the wrists feel tight and shoulders are just stiff for two, you know, two or three days when they shouldn't be a store. But, um, yeah, it's one of those things that I need to be better at. Um, and I think that would just overall help overall mobility for being CrossFit because you need to, part of being successful in CrossFit Mm -hmm. is being able to recover and not beat your joints up too bad doing a hundred squats fast or, you know, lots of heavy loaded lifting. Because if you're moving improperly, you're, the, the joints and the shoulders and the knees and hips <clears throat> are going to take the brute of that. Mm-hmm. And then you're just sore, you're sore for too long. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's that's not going to yeah. help on Sunday when you need to perform at uh, 100%. So those are probably my three little bugaboos that I need to be better at. Mm-hmm. That's but. good. And again, it comes down to that balance and like every all those things take time. And mm-hmm. it's like, what sure. do you, you know, when do you prioritize certain things? So um, last question is, what does a healthy life look like to you? Mm. I would love to hear like all of your podcasts. I know. Condensed into one. I'm working on that. I want to try to pull them That's all into cool. one. It would be cool. All right. Repeat the question again. What does a healthy life look like to you? I would say if you, because if you kind of, I'm a visual person, so picture a, a triangle, mm-hmm. right? And um, I think one thing that I'm really big in my health coaching is that food is not the only thing that feeds us. Mm-hmm. And so, 
our career is a, a huge part of our life. Our faith is another part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, our relationships also feed into us. And then we have um, our, our food. Mm-hmm. And so I like to think of it as that type of triangle. Um, and it can look, I feel like it can look different on where you are feeling. Like mm-hmm. if you're feeling just um, like relationships are kind of straining you, you know, maybe working on that, making that the base. Um, but I think really in general, um, obviously nutrition mm-hmm. is going to be a, a big foundation. Um, and then I, I like to put spirituality in there, your faith, mm-hmm. um, because that feeds into every other aspect. And I like, I just, you have to be happy in what you do. Mm-hmm. And so many people are actually unhappy in, right. in what they do. And so I put the, you know, workplace in there in that triangle. Um, then from there you can kind of build like you know at the top of that little tiny triangle it might be supplements Mm. i believe in in a really great strong healthy supplement routine Mm -hmm. because you've got to fill those gaps sometimes right so i kind of like to look at it like that i like that pyramid that's good yeah let's see if you can top it well i just you know i'm trying to listen but at the same time i'm trying to (laughs) think of your own answer (laughs) yeah conjure my come up with my answer and I just uh i don't know for some reason i'm just going to come up with uh, the three b's brain brain body and belly so, I like that. You know, it, that. Yeah, it, it just made just it up. Made it up. <laughs> it's the triple brain, B. body, and belly. What's your belly? Your food? What you're eating. You know, I mean, obviously, I think you know what you're taking in and supporting you, mm-hmm. and essentially giving you fuel for the day is, is okay. an important part. And I mean, we talked about breakfast being mm-hmm. being very pivotal for us, getting just getting that good kick start, and it's mm-hmm. a good family time for us. Sure. We pull little Hattie cakes up, pool. and <laughs> and Storm just you know he's you know loves it. He loves his waffles or loves his about time pancakes or loves whatever standing on the chair while he eats it's crazy yeah. it's crazy <laughs> they're they're crazy and um so you know that's important we the what we're fueling ourselves with is you know she kind of hit on that mm-hmm. uh, you know brain is for me is obviously what you're what you're taking in i mean what are we watching in either mm-hmm. television or our phone or what are we um just what's consuming our thoughts mm-hmm. and if if uh, again, like I said, if we're putting God first and allowing that to kind of calm us and soothe us and give us kind of meaning and direction, what we're mm-hmm. doing each day um, puts us on the right track. As well as I've, I've said, bef- I've heard before, but I've said hearing that before that um, you're the the average of the five closest people you hang out with. I love with. that. Yeah. And so. so you know, I think also, again, your relationships that she kind of hit on, that feeds into your brain and mm-hmm. what, you know, what's your 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 jargon and what are you, what's your conversations like with people. And, and again, that's going to impact your day-to-day happiness. And then, you know, body. So obviously the mm-hmm. physical aspect of how are we treating it? Are we getting proper sleep? Are we getting proper recovery? Are we getting proper training and, and pushing our, our physical boundaries? Um, again, is that is that developing us to to find kind of happiness in what we're doing. So yeah, I like that. Triple B's. Awesome. B. Look at that. All right. Put it on a shirt. <laughs> Put it on a bumper sticker. Yeah, whatever. there you go. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to share yeah. and to share so much about your lives. I really appreciate it. And I know people listening will too. So thanks. Thank awesome. You, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I loved getting to sit down with Graham and Savannah to understand better what drives them and how they live their day-to-day lives according to their mission and beliefs. Let's keep the conversation going. Let me know how you juggle your many roles in the comments below this episode. To make sure you never miss an episode and to receive exclusive content from me, head to my website, juliefouché.com, where you can subscribe to my email list. Also, don't forget to share your stories. If you or someone you know has used lifestyle to overcome a serious health challenge, please email me at info at juliefouché.com. I'll choose some of these inspiring stories to share here on the podcast in future episodes. If you like what you hear, don't forget to subscribe and consider giving the podcast a five-star rating on iTunes. Also, don't forget you can train with me by visiting beyondthewhiteboard.com slash juliefouché. I always love hearing your feedback, so please leave comments under this post on my website, juliefouché.com, and share your thoughts on social media with the hashtag JFHealth. Thank you again so much for listening, and I'll catch you next time on Pursuing Health.